Hello everyone, this is Federico speaking on behalf of the OpenScope team, and welcome to a new video. One of the things that gets requested all the time in the comment sections and on emails and stuff like that is that we uh, make a series of uh, video tutorials explaining how OpenScope works and how to use it. I'm not going to make a tutorial today, so this is not what you're watching, this is uh, not a tutorial, and I guess that's my uh, my number one big disclaimer at the start of this video is that this is not going to be a tutorial on how to use OpenScope. And the reason uh, I'm saying this is that OpenScope is uh, constantly changing. Uh, almost every month uh, new things are added, new features, and sometimes that changes how it's, uh, how it's used. Uh, the interface might change frequently, and so that's one of the reasons I've been putting off making a tutorial for so long now. Uh, so what this video is, uh, is mostly a sort of um, walkthrough how I normally use OpenScope and uh, I will be explaining what I'm thinking and what I'm doing so that hopefully you can learn uh, something from it. Uh, but do not take this as, an, uh, as a full-on tutorial. One of the things I did want to show you is uh, that there is in fact a... Um, we have a list of a reference of commands and I'll show you that now. Uh, so it's a list of commands, uh, all the different commands that you can use for OpenScope, and uh, I'm going to be linking this in the description, um, and well, I won't be going through every single one of these commands uh, in this video, because again, this is not a tutorial, and a lot of these commands I wouldn't use on a, uh, on a usual uh, OpenScope session. Uh, so I guess that's one of the main reasons. Uh, so let me go back now to OpenScope. So here it is. I've been uh, working with fancy transitions. I'm not sure how it's working out, but we'll figure it out. So uh, this is what you'll see when you open OpenScope up for the first time. This is Seattle. And I am going to go through the interface a little bit here. I won't go into too much detail because this is subject to change. Uh, down in the bottom, this is our uh, command line, so this is where I'll be entering all the commands, and it's where you should be looking for the majority of this video. Uh, we have here time warp, so this allows us to make the simulator run a little bit faster. I don't, you know, it's not generally used, I usually just use it for testing new airports. Uh, the pause, pretty, pretty straightforward, and then there's the play button to play it. This is to switch airports, so these are all the airports that are currently in OpenScope. Um, or actually, these are the ones coming in the next update, but by the time this video goes up, it'll probably be uh, out. I'm going to be using Hamburg for this video, just because it's a fairly, um, sort of, it has a lot of procedures. Uh, so it's a pretty normal airport, but it doesn't have too much traffic, so I'll be able to talk without feeling a little bit stressed. Uh, these are some of the, uh, I guess, scope, uh, visual scope things. So we have fixes and runways. So you'll be able to see the fixes and the runways. Uh, I'll turn that off. I don't usually have that on, but again, if you're learning, it might be useful, or especially if you're using an airport for the first time, it might be useful to learn the names, or not learn the names of some fixes, but have the names of the fixes up on the screen on the scope. Uh, I'll turn that off though. This is the SID display, so this the standard instrumental departures display. So it shows us all the departures with all their names. So you can see it does have a good few procedures. And similarly, the star for the standard terminal arrivals. And there's the stars for Hamburg. Uh, I might leave the... actually, I'll turn them off. We have restricted areas. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. It shows them there. Uh, it also shows their height. So this is up to flight level 30 or 3000 feet. And that's just the name of the restricted area. Then we have terrain, which in this case, there's no mountains over here at Hamburg, but we do have water. So if we turn that off, you can see no more water. That's the uh, the Elbe River, I think. Uh, I'll show you an airport with a lot of terrain. There it is. So that's what the terrain looks like here on the left. Uh, I'll go back to Hamburg because as I said, we're gonna be using Hamburg for today's video. And then finally, the video map. And the video map is just this series of lines that just give you a lot of information about the airspace and the airports and the runways, etc. Uh, there's a few settings here, you can play around with them. Uh, one of the things, um, actually, I'm not going to touch them. Usually I would if I was playing myself, but just to, for the purposes of showing everything, I'll leave that on. We have speech, so this turns sound on. I'm not sure if you will be able to hear. Um, so if I say 
Scandinavian 7895 Heavy Fly Present Heading. Yeah, so you should have been able to hear that. I'm going to turn that off. I find it quite annoying, but it's a cool feature. And this is the traffic sliders, or the traffic rate sliders. It allows you to change uh, how much traffic you're getting. So currently it's obviously 111. Uh, there are no overflights. Uh, but we have arrivals, so I can turn the rate of arrivals up or down, and I'll leave it all the same for now. And I can change the individual uh, arrivals and departures. So if I want to practice a specific uh, flow of arrivals, or I just want to practice bringing uh, departures, uh, or, or one specific departure, I can control that here. Um, but I won't be today. And this is the, uh, I guess, the question mark section. So uh, very importantly, something that I strongly, strongly encourage you read is the airport guide, if you're going to be using a new airport. Uh, so it just has a bunch of information about the airspace and the airport that you're controlling. And I strongly encourage you to take a look at, uh, at an airport if you're going to be controlling it. Uh, over here on the right hand side, there's a little arrow. If we open that, this is our flight strips area. Very important. And we have flight strips with a lot of information. So the top there, that's the call sign. That's the aircraft type. Uh, that is, I'm actually not sure what that is. Computer identification number, doesn't matter at all. Squawk, doesn't really matter. Filed altitude, uh, I guess it is a little bit important. Uh, this is the origin or departure airport. This is their route, the runway they're expecting. And very similar for the arrivals. So actually I should have said blue here are the departures and red are the arrivals. So again, call sign, aircraft. Uh, we have a squawk and our assigned altitude and flight plan altitude. So uh, there's a difference between the two. And in the middle here, the destination or the arrival airport. And again, the route and the runway they're expecting. So at this point, I'm just going to begin playing. I'm going to reload uh, this so we can start with aircraft outside our airspace. And I'm just going to start playing. I might explain a few things as we go along. So I'll open the flight strips bay and... I'll clear the, this first aircraft down at the bottom for departure. So I'm going to use the CAF command, or cleared as filed, followed by the CVS, which is climb via SID. And I'm going to say climb via the SID, but maintain 5,000 feet. And I can leave that out, and it'll just climb to the, uh, via the SID up to its uh, filed altitude, or to the top altitude defined in the airport file. But I'm just going to say 5,000, just to make sure that they don't climb above 5,000, but still follow the restrictions in the... Uh, departure. And then I'm going to say taxi or just a W uh, for weight, I think it's what it stands for. And then the runway they're expecting is 33. So there we go. So clear it as filed, climb via the SID, maintain 5000, and taxi to and hold short of runway 33. Uh, they are holding short, even though it looks like they're on the runway, they are holding short. They're not on the runway, so you can still land airplanes uh, if there's an aircraft holding short of it. And I'm going to tell the aircraft to take off with the TO command. I can write take off as well, but TO is a lot shorter. So a lot of the commands that I use are shortened versions of the sort of full commands. Again, this is all described in the uh, reference, uh, the, com the, com the list of commands that I showed at the beginning, which is linked in the description. Uh, while this person is taking off, this Eurowings 7-9er Golf, uh, which is a dash 8, I'm going to take a look at some of these arrivals, because we've already got four arrivals in our airspace. Uh, they're all expecting runway 23, which is this long one here. Well, the runway is long, but this is the extended center line. Uh, I'm going to tell this guy to fly uh, a heading of zero, 09 or 0 degrees. So that's directly east. Uh, so I use the turn command and then a three digit uh, bearing. And there it is. Zero, 09 or 0. So now you can see they're flying that straight line. Uh, this here, this is the sort of projected path. We can turn that off uh, through the settings. I'm going to leave it on for today's video. I would normally have it off. Something else, if we press the F2 key on our keyboard, uh, we have another sort of, it's not really a projected path, more of a what direction are they, fl are they flying. And this, the end of that line is the position where they will be in uh, exactly one minute from now. So if I wait a minute, they're going to be there. If I change the speed, obviously this line is going to get shorter if, it, if it's going slower and longer if it's going faster. And if I turn, uh, so let's turn it zero, 080, zero, just a little bit to the left, you can see the line moves. Uh, so I would normally have this on and have the projected path lights off, but that is personal preference. So this guy is following his route, the Eurowings airplane is following uh, their route to uh, on the uh, Vesser 2 Golf, I think is the name of the departure. I could be wrong. Shortened to W Sierra or Whiskey Sierra November 2 Golf. Uh, I'm also going to descend this flight here to 6,000 feet. Uh, so I use the C command, uh, which is for climb, but it works for all out for any changes of altitude, and I'm going to write in a uh, the flight level. So it's flight level six zero, so in hundreds of uh, feet. 
So flight level 100 would be 10,000 feet. And I'm going to do some of the same things with these guys. So um, something I'm, I'm, I use very regularly is the, um, and it's a new feature, is the uh, measuring path or measuring bearings and distances tool. So if I hold down control on my keyboard and then I press on a point and I click with my mouse on a point on the scope and then drag my mouse somewhere else, a line appears and you can see it says the distance in nautical miles and the bearing, uh, the magnetic heading. Uh, so I can use that. So for example, for this aircraft, I want them to fly somewhere around there. So I know that that's a heading of 317. I'm just going to say 320. I like rounded it off. And that's about it. And I'm going to descend them down to also flight level 60. And with this person right here, with this Swiss Airlines flight, I'm going to descend them down to flight level 80 for no particular reason. Um, now this Eurowings person flight... Uh, they could be climbed a little higher, uh, so I'm just going to say CBS or climb the other SID again, and they'll just climb to their uh, to the top SID altitude, which in this case is 10,000 feet. That works for me. They won't bother anyone on their way out, so that's fine. I'm going to descend uh, this Scandinavian aircraft down to 5,000 as well, and I might give them a why not a 210 heading. Um, at this point. Well, I can see that I'm not doing a very good job of separating these aircraft because if they keep going the way they're going, they're probably all going to come pretty close of each other, to each other. I'm going to descend this flight down to 3000, the Eurowings flight, uh, so I can get them on the ILS a little bit faster. So this is the extended centerline to the runway 23. Again, if you're not sure what runway it is, activate the fixes and runways, and you can see it's labeled as S23. Uh, I'm going to turn that off. And uh, in the meantime... We've got another departure that's been sitting there for a while, so let's clear them as well, the Ryanair 385 Papa. So cleared as filed, climb via the SID, and taxi to runway 33. That's the one that they requested. I can change the the uh, the route if I wanted to. So if I just want to change the uh, the SID, I could write I could use the SID command and give them a new SID. Um obviously we'd need to take a look at the SIDs and say, okay, well, why not go for the Vessel 1 Bravo? Uh in, for some airports, um, there will be one SID per runway. Uh, it depends a lot on the airport. I strongly uh, suggest that you have charts open uh, when when using OpenScope. A lot of these things may also be described in the airport guide. Not necessarily, though. Um, they should be, in fairness. Uh, so, yeah. And, okay, he's ready for takeoff. So, Ryanair 385 Papa is now cleared for takeoff. Uh, I can also use the reroute command. Uh, so if I want to type in, uh, I want to change the route, uh, the entire route, I can do that too. So if after um, uh, the Vessor VOR, I want them to fly direct to the Echo Echo uh, Lima VOR, um, with and skipping all of these in the middle, I can do that. So I could do something like or or, which stands for reroute or RR. Apologies, my uh, Irishisms are coming through. And then say, uh, we need to say the um, the airport, so in this case, Hamburg, and the runway that they took off from, or that they're going to take off from, 33, followed by a dot. So one dot signifies that it's going to go a, a procedure or uh, an airway. So in this case, it'd be the Wesser 2 Golf. Another dot to say that it ends at Wesser. And then from there, I'm just going to say direct. So that's two dots if it's a direct straight line from one point to another and then direct to Echo Echo Lima. And I'm not going to do it because that's not what I want, but I could type that in. Okay, at this point all our aircraft are coming pretty close to each other. Uh, I'm going to descend them to 2000 and make them turn right. And again I'm going to measure because I'm not sure what the bearing is. Round 130, so turn 130. You can combine uh, commands like I just did, so I, I did a descend and a uh, turn instruction. You can do that, that's perfectly fine. Uh, you can make your commands as long as you want. Um, let's see, how am I going to separate them? Uh, well, you're going to keep flying on that route, so you, you can see that's their projected path, so they're going to keep flying down that way. I might just get you then to go on a heading of maybe 350 or something like that, to get behind the Scandinavian uh, A330. Don't know why an A330 from Scandinavian Airlines would be landing at Hamburg, but there we go. We've got another plane that just came in, the Ryanair 47 Kilo Victor. Uh, it's going to be following the same arrival that this aircraft was following. 
Uh, they're on their way. By coincidence, these two flights were following the same departure. I can give this aircraft a direct, so I can give them the direct to the Echo Echo Lima BOR that I that I was gonna give to that uh, to that flight. You can see they're now flying direct, and if I look at the all the stuff here, you can see there's that BOR. And now they're getting pretty close to uh, crossing the localizer, so I'm gonna give them a turn um, to 200. That doesn't say turn. I can also use the fly heading, so FH, and then 200, and there we go. That's our new path. Um, I'm going to descend you down to 3000, and now I'm going to use the ILS command, or the I command, to uh, clear them to land on runway 23. So I followed by the runway 23, and they're going to intercept the localizer and descend down on the glide path. I'm going to do the same for you, uh, I23. I'm going to make them design, descend them down to 4,000, maybe slow them down, so I, I'm using the SP command, or speed, and then the speed and knots, so 220 two knots, and that's indicated airspeed. And I might turn them already, let's do 260, so that's 30 degrees, uh, so that's 30 degrees plus the runway heading, so the runway heading is roughly 230, it might be 235, or it might be or 234, or it might be 225, but it's roughly 230, so 30 degrees more. And I'm going to descend the Swiss down to 5000. And there we go. So I'm just slowing them down to maintain separation between the Scandinavian and this uh, Phenom Embraer, I think it is. I think it's an Embraer. Uh, I'm going to use the FPH command here, so that's the fly press and heading. So they're going to continue on the heading that they're currently flying. So you can see it's just turned into a straight line now, and I just wanted to do that to avoid that turn that you can see in the star. So they follow this line here and then down that way. Uh, so this is just for traffic management, I suppose, to make lives easier for ATC in, in situations with a lot of heavy traffic, but in this case we don't have a lot of that. I forgot to clear this guy for the ILS, so ILS 2-3, there we go. Now they're cleared to intercept the localizer. We've got a Lufthansa 747 coming in from the northeast. Uh, I'm going to keep them on, on their route for now. I might give them a heading at later on. Uh, I can also go direct. So I can say direct to Delta Hotel 657. So that's what we're going to do. 657. So DCT for direct. That doesn't say 657. There we go. And now they're going to fly directly to that point. Uh, so I'm just trying to show off a lot of the uh, commands that I would normally use. And uh, I'm going to descend them down to 3,000 now. That's fine. Now I can climb aircraft, uh, so I can climb this guy to 150. The problem is, if we look at our, at our flight strip now, it says flight level 100.01. So you can ignore the 0 .01, that just means they're going to be just above flight level 100. The reason it won't go above that is that our airspace um, is uh, only covers uh, this area from the ground up to flight level 100, or 10,000 feet, it is different for every airport, and so we can't climb aircraft above that altitude. There is a setting that we can turn on or off, uh, which is allow departures via climb. Currently that's set to yes, so that means when they get to 100.01, .01, they will actually leave our scope. Uh, so you'll probably see that at some point. If I turn that off, they won't be able to get to 0 0.01, they'll just stay at level 100 and stay in your airspace. Uh, I'm going to clear them for the ILS. We did a weird turn there, but that's fine. Uh, someone came in just then, yeah. Uh, we've got that November 51342, long call sign. Um, I can descend this Ryanair flight to 5,000 feet now. And at this point, I'm just using the same commands over and over again. Obviously, different airports might... Uh, require you to use slightly different commands. It sort of depends on your own workflow and how you how you want to control the aircraft. So this the reason I chose this airport is that it doesn't have a lot of traffic, so it makes it quite easy for me to talk over what I'm trying to do and to explain things slightly slower. You can see now the Ryanair here. It just said uh, Bremen Radar Ryanair 385 Papa switching to center. Good day. It is at flight level 100, but you can see it's no longer in our flight strip bay because it is at 100.01, .01, so it's just above our airspace. And they're going to stay at flight level 100. Obviously, in real life, they continue climbing to their uh, to their cruise altitude. But they'd be talking to Bremen Raider now, I think it is, and they'd be climbing them higher. Um, 
they can descend as well. Go down to 5,000 feet. There's no reason they should still be at flight level 100. Um, the information we see here, I should explain that as well. So that's their call sign again, Eurowing 6 Lima. The H there, that just says they're a heavy aircraft. And if we look uh, at the flight strip, you can see they're a heavy A330. Again, the H there standing for heavy. You can see the Ryanair here, which is this uh, Boeing 737, doesn't have a H in front of it, and it doesn't have a H there at the back. Uh, so we have Eurowing 6 Lima, it's a heavy. That's their altitude, again, their flight level, so flight level 089. And that's their speed, so currently 300 knots and that is their uh, ground speed that's shown. If I want to find out what their indicated airspeed is, I can use the SI command, which is say indicated, and it says down at the bottom, indicating 250 knots. There's also a say altitude, SA, leaving 8,200, and there's a couple more, um, possibly SS, which is, no, I thought it would be say squawk, but it's not. There's a few commands that you can use for that. Uh, I'm going to descend them down to 3000 and make them turn heading of 260. So that will get them on the ILS. ILS 23. Um, very good. Looking good. I'm going to descend them down. I'm going to keep them on their present heading just to get some separation between these two. Uh, so I'm going to get him in to go something like this. And then he will go something like this probably. Uh, I can press, so once I've drawn all these lines, I can press escape to get rid of them. Probably should have mentioned that at some point. Uh, we've got a new aircraft just came in. And, um, yeah, I'm going to keep playing for a little longer. I might shorten this video. One of the other things that, um, that are very useful are the scope commands. There's not many of them currently, um, but I'm going to show the... I guess the the uh, more important ones, and again, there they are. Uh, there is a reference guide with a list of all the ones that are currently available in the simulator, and I will link it down in the description. So I do suggest you take a look. Uh, to access scope commands, we need to press the tab key on your keyboard. You can see now it says Enter Scope Command, and we have a red sort of line there. And uh, there's a few things we can do with this. Uh, so one of them is using our numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and 9. Uh, well, actually, 5 doesn't really work in this case. Uh, I can change the position of the, the flight tag, I think it's what it's called, uh, relative to the, 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 um, the aircraft itself. So at the moment, this is just north of the aircraft. Uh, you can use the, I guess, the numpad is the best way to look at it. So 6 would be to position it east, 4 would be west. Uh, 8 would be north, 2 would be uh, south. And I do think you can do southwest, etc. So if I type in 1 and then click on it, there it is. So it is now southwest. I'm going to uh, turn the scope commands back off. So I can give them normal commands, heading 210 and ILS 23. So this is useful um, in, in, in different situations. Uh, let me go 140 or something. Yeah. Um, so sometimes you'll have uh, flight strips or flight tags that are just sort of on top of other aircraft and it's a little bit hard to make out what's what's what. And sometimes uh, you can use these to just uh, symbolize uh, a, a state, uh, an aircraft state. So I can have different positions for the tags depending on whether it's a departure, on arrival, or if they're established on the ILS, or if they've been giving descent clearances, etc, etc. This is something that air traffic controllers use in real life. Um, so it's uh, very cool that we can we can do that too. I'm gonna set it back to north. So I'm gonna use eight and then click on them. I'm gonna turn the uh, scope commands off. So again, switching between scope and aircraft with the tab key. I'm gonna descend them down to flight level five zero. Um, there's a couple other ones. Uh, let me see if I can show them to you. Uh, so let me switch. Ooh, and let me get on that. So these are the aircraft commands, and if I load this page, these are the scope commands. So we have the move data block, we have a scratch pad, and a halo. So I'm going to show these now. Uh, so the scratch, uh, the scratch pad is uh, fairly straightforward. If I switch back, ooh, uh, I can type in, I don't know, uh, ATC, for example, and then click on them. And you can see it now says ATC on their, on their flight tag. Uh, so I can use this again to uh, write information about aircraft, whether they're cleared for the ILS, 
and other stuff like that. Uh, again, used in real life and uh, a, a lot, and it's more useful in real life than it is in open scope because we have the ability to uh, to well to see an aircraft projected path and stuff like that, which obviously real life air traffic controllers don't have the privilege of doing. And then there's the uh, halo, uh, so the toggle halo. Uh, so I'll show that again. And if I do uh, tab, and then if I do F7, or I can write that in myself, QPJ, I can add a halo. So by default, it's three nautical miles. Let me turn them to one zero and clear the ILS. Uh, actually, I'm going to descend them down to 2000 first and then clear them for the ILS. Uh, so I can activate a halo. I can, uh, if I do that again, it turns it off. I can also specify a radius. So by default, it's three nautical miles. I can do five and it's slightly larger. Uh, if I do it again, it'll set it back to three. And if I do it again, it'll turn it off. Uh, I think there's a way of turning it off in one step. But I'm not entirely sure what it is. Uh, I don't use this feature very often, but it is useful if you want to keep an eye on a specific aircraft. Um, we, there are no emergency aircraft in open scope, at least not at the moment. Um, but that would be useful in a situation like that to just mark an aircraft just to say, you know, be careful with this one or something like that. Uh, let's descend them down to 3,000. They're going quite slowly, I think. Or maybe I just descend them. I'm not entirely sure. Well, that's fine. I can just get this guy on the ILS first. So yeah, those are the scope commands uh, that you can use. Um, there are plans to bring in more uh, scope commands. But at the moment, uh, those are the th I believe those are the only three available. Again, take a look at the scope command reference that I've linked in the description. Uh, to uh, read more about those and also the aircraft commands because obviously I haven't gone through all of them There's a lot that I haven't gone through and there's a lot of aliases or shortened versions of the commands that I've used Which uh, you might use it's just sort of habit for me which ones I use I would use turn rather than FH even though it's shorter and um, I think it's simply because I Learned to do it with turn and I sort of never unlearned it but uh, that's about it. Something else, actually, I could I could show. Uh, so it's important when uh, when we use the turn command that we do three digits, because uh, even if it's a two-digit heading, so for example, if I wanted them to fly just northeast, would be a heading of three zero degrees or thirty degrees. But it's important that we write that as zero three zero, um, because two digits are reserved for, um, I think it's called incremental turns, I believe that's the term. I'm going to keep them on that heading, actually. Descent and add 5,000, I should have done that a while ago. Uh, I'm going to expedite their descent, so an X after their altitude will make them descend a little bit faster. Let's descend them down to 3,000 and make them fly a heading of maybe, I don't know, 120. And let me show incremental, I think it's incremental, I could be wrong, uh, headings with, with uh, this is that loud emotion? I'm not entirely sure. I don't think that's loud emotion. I'm not entirely sure what airline that is, to be honest. Uh, so I can say turn, and then the letter OR for right, or L for left. I'm going to say right 20. So that will mean turn right by 20 degrees. So turn 20 degrees to the right. Not fly a heading of 20 degrees, but rather turn 20 degrees. And you can see they will turn right 20 degrees. And this is useful if you don't want to give a specific heading. Uh, you're not sure what heading you want to give them. Again, of course, you can use the uh, the measuring tool to measure the specific heading, uh, but you can do you can do it this way too. Uh, let's go two zero zero and clear for the ILS. Um, they're just going to follow the star, which is fine by me. We've got a new departure that I haven't been paying attention to, so clear it as filed. Climb to the SID taxi two three three. You can see it's going to show up on the runway now. Yep, there it is. And I'm going to take them off. I know there's an aircraft on short final, but I think there's enough separation between them. Probably wouldn't happen in real life, but this is in real life. So send them now to 2000, and I'm going to fly them a little bit south. Um, I'm not entirely sure where they're beginning their descent, but just as a rough right, 3000 feet within... 10 nautical miles of the runway is about right. Uh, so this is the 10 nautical mile mark ish, maybe a little bit further up. Uh, and so I know that'll be quite a little bit tight. So I'm descending them down to 2000 so that they can stay on the ILS for a little bit longer. Um, that's fine. All right, they can fly a heading of 260. 
and clear them for the ILS. They can now fly heading of 210 and they're cleared for the ILS. Uh, he's descended to 3000, which is fine. Uh, I felt like there was something else I wanted to say about the turn command, but I've forgotten now. Oh yeah, so this is the say heading, say sh command is useful in these situations. Uh, if you Or you can measure it as well as I was saying. Uh, but I know they're on heading of 034 and I want them to turn, I don't know, to the heading of about 060. But I don't, but not exactly, I can just say turn right 20 degrees. And then I can ask for their heading again once they're finished the turn. And there you go, 054. Clearly I didn't do the maths right, because I don't know, but anyway, that's some of the stuff that you can do. We can see our Eurowings flight is now taken off, 2,000 feet now, and he's on the Ramar 3 Golf departure. If I turn the SID display, you can see that's where the Ramar departure ends, and this is the route they're going to fly. Again, I could look at charts to uh, double check. So uh, I think I'm going to... I've uh, finished this video now, I've been playing for almost 41 minutes, actually over 41 minutes now, and uh, I've shown pretty much everything I wanted to show. Uh, I hope you've learned something from this, uh, obviously this is not meant to be a tutorial as I've said a good few times now, but um, I, I, I did want to make at least one video to, uh, to at least give an introduction to uh, OpenScope and how you can use it and how I use it personally. Obviously a lot of the people who uh, contribute to OpenScope use, use it in a very different way. Uh, everyone has their own personal preferences. I I do hope that you learned something from this. If, if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, feel free to comment down below. Uh, I will be linking the uh, reference sh uh, sheets with all the commands down below in the description. Uh, you can also join our Slack channel where we communicate. It's the best way of reaching us. There is also a subreddit and a few other ways of getting to us, but uh, really the best way is uh, the Slack. Uh, I, that will be linked in the description down below as well. Uh, feel free to take a look at our GitHub to see what we're working on, or if you'd like to contribute yourself. Uh, read the documentation, obviously, and if you have any questions whatsoever, you can ask either in the comments, uh, or if it's about code in particular, you probably want to ask in the Slack. Um, but I do hope you learned something from this video. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you in the next one.